Queen's Park Rangers have just four championship matches to go and will be hoping to put themselves well on their way to securing their safety with a result away at Hull City this weekend. So as usual, let's chat through what to expect from Liam Rosinia's Tigers side on Saturday. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you enjoy the video. Hull City are a side that have been in and around the playoffs for the vast majority of the 23-24 season, but they're one whose form has seemed to peter out at just the wrong time. Five wins from six between the 19th of January and the 20th of February saw them rise to sixth place, but just one win in eight matches since has seen them fall to 10th, now six points adrift from sixth place Norwich City with a game in hand over the Canaries. It's still mathematically possible for a late playoff run from the Tigers, should they win all of their remaining fixtures and Norwich City somehow nosedive from their impressive form in 2024, which has seen them lose just three of their 17 fixtures so far. But for many Hull City fans, dropping two points in the two-all home draw against Middlesbrough on Wednesday night has spelt the end of their promotion dreams. And I think for many, this slip has made it a difficult season to judge. There's no doubt this is a club on the rise, having finished 19th in their first season back in the Championship two years ago, and 15th last season following an impressive revival under Rosinha from November onwards. But it's the weight of investment he has received this year that has made this season so difficult to assess. Somewhere in the region of 10 million was spent last summer, including 5.8 million on top scorer Jaden Philogene, and there was again a hefty outlay on six players in January in a bid to get them over the line. Some successful in the case of Liverpool's Fabio Cavallo, who boasts seven goals in 15 games but can't have come cheap, and some unsuccessful in the case of 50-year-old Billy Sharp, who has been blunt in his seven appearances for the club. They have scored a healthy 59 goals this season, but Ryan Allsop's inability to keep a clean sheet, even Begovic has two more than his nine, will have Hull City fans wondering where they might have finished if they had a sturdier pair of hands between the posts. And for as impressive as Hull have been away from home this season, at the heart of their downfall is their bad home form this year. They've won just one of eight at home in 2024, drawing four and losing three, making them winless at home in six consecutive appearances ahead of QPR's visit on Saturday. I personally think this is a reasonably successful season for Hull, despite the drop-off and despite the significant spend. They've trended in the right direction, they've played some attractive attacking football, and they'll likely profit from some of those significant investments having made some very smart choices. It's easy to forget that this is Rosinha's first proper manager's job, and so he's still been learning the season, he's still made some mistakes. Replace and recruit well again in the summer and I'd expect to see him in the top half again. Now that winless run of six at home will be ringing some alarm bells for QPR fans, having gifted Plymouth Argyle their first goal at home park in six appearances on Tuesday night, and in turn spurning the opportunity to go six points clear of the bottom three. A point away at Plymouth wasn't such a bad thing in the end, with all teams below QPR other than Millwall dropping points, meaning QPR rose a place to 16th and retained their four point gap. And we do have a considerably better goal difference than the bottom three, with many of these lower teams taking a real beating on Tuesday and Wednesday night, including Huddersfield losing 4-1 away at Preston, Stoke 3-0 at Swansea, and Blackburn shipping five away at Bristol City. My frustration at Begovic's howler aside, I am at least reassured of the fact that we didn't lose and we aren't taking a thrashing at such a crucial stage of this season. But our issue does remain and it's been the same all season, we simply cannot score goals. We had a handful of excellent chances again that just were not taken and our solitary goal still came from Sam Field, whose three goals in the past seven games matches Dykes, Frey and Armstrong's output in a combined 45 appearances. And that inability to score could present a significant issue against a very tough final four sides. Though of course it would be very typically QPR to pick up wins against any of these sides, having taken just a point from Argyle and Wednesday. One positive I did see on Tuesday night was Chris Willock's cameo in the number 10 role off the bench, which got him playing much closer to Elias Chair and the pair causing sustained pressure leading to our goal. I'd really like to see Marty recreate this in the starting lineup away at Hull, and I think that would be key for us creating enough chances to score. Otherwise, I'd say we need to keep it tight against a side that has an immense attack on its day and hope we can nick it with a goal from someone, anyone, but please, Marty, for the love of God, not Albert Adoma. 
On that basis, I'm going to predict an optimistic and scrappy 1-0 away win for Rangers. Let me know your predictions and thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this preview. I'll see you in my next video for my post-match reaction. Come on, you us.